welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video we are doing a girl talk which I'm really excited about because I wanted to bring everyone on camera for like the first time. Obviously you've seen everyone in my vlogs, in my week of my lives, like literally like anything I post on my channel you have seen these girls but I wanted to bring us all together and do a sit down girl talk. I've only done one of these on my channel before and I actually really enjoyed doing it so I don't know why I haven't done it sooner. But I put on my Instagram and asked you guys to ask me some questions, ask all of us some questions because I feel like we're all very different in the way that we've grown up, our backgrounds, what we've been through, like friends relationships relationships and I feel like it'd be good to hear all of our like different perspectives so let's begin with the questions and if you guys want to ask any future questions then make sure you follow me on Instagram at it's Jaylan I always put the link in the description box if you guys want to go check me out Directors. First question is, how did we all get so close? I was friends with Summer in year seven, so like throughout the entirety of secondary school slash high school, we were friends all the way until sixth form. So when we came to uni first year, Summer moved in with these girls here. So it was it's proximity. Book trope. Mm. <laughs> Obviously, I was friends with Summer originally, and she was friends with all these girls. And then me and Summer were in the same class and we met Lainey. When we decided to like, live together, we were like, oh, we'll move in with Summer and then all of Summer's flatmates as well. So then second year is how we've all become like a little group within ourselves. Wait, can I add something? Yes. Yeah. Go, girl. <laughs> I think how we all came so close was parties, no? Because we all bonded. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And then seeing how much we all cared for each other, I think that's what made us close. And then mm -hmm. it's just fun planning a party. Well, it, it is weird. I don't know how you felt, but I was so, not nervous, but like, I felt bad coming into this flat because like I felt like I was imposing because you guys lived together yeah. like a mm year -hmm. already. Because you didn't really know these three at all, did you? I don't even know. know. Yeah. Like, I thought it was going to take ages to like build up the same relationship that Freya and Selma already have with these three ladies, but it literally was like a week. I agree, I am surprised by like how quick it was because I felt yeah. the same thing because I became closer with Freya anyway through summer. And I have been to like Summer's flat, but only like four times yeah. throughout the entirety of first year. So I was the same when I was moving into the environment with these girls. I was like, I feel like I'm the extra addition when they've already got like an established mm -hmm. dynamic. But like within the first week, it was just so easy. So. <laughs> Do you find it difficult to maintain a large girl friendship group? No, no, no. 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 It just comes naturally, so I guess it's yeah. right. I guess we do have like our little sections off. As, as we, we literally are sad. Yeah, so we have the key. Yeah, we've got the Heathers in the front and the Sharties in the back. Yeah, but I think that's what works so well as well. Yeah. yeah. Nobody gets like left out. We all have different things to connect over as well, and we're so comfortable with doing that. And it's also nice because we've also been able to like share things that we've loved, like Taylor Swift. Now we've all bonded over mm -hmm. that. And then like you guys are teaching me so much about Harry Styles and stuff. <laughs> it's, just, like, it's just nice because we've had like things to bond over and like learn about each other. Even though it is so big because we do have like the two like separate groups within a group, it hasn't felt hard to maintain. It's a little stereotype, but mm -hmm. we've not got bitchy with each other, mm -hmm. like at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with conflict within a group? As in this group or just in general? It just says within a group. So I guess like just in general, maybe not within this specific group, but like within our friendship groups. At <laughs> uni, it's like everybody wants to put their two pence in, so making sure that other people aren't having an opinion and squashing it. You could say one thing and then it get twisted by other people, so if you go directly to the source, yeah. mm -hmm. That's what I wish I would have done more, is not yeah. let other people get involved. When we were younger, we used to just take whatever like anyone said as like gospel and just run with it. But now I just feel like we don't have time for it. And it's like, did you say this yes or no? Okay, then fix yeah. up. <laughs> as, much as, like, as much as confrontation is hard, it's key in pretty much nine yeah. out of ten times. Nine out of ten times. Mm -hmm. Nine out of what is it? <laughs> what did you say? Majority of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Majority of the time. If you know you are not going to move past the conflict, but as long as you have that closure and it's not yeah. just like ended weirdly on like bad vibes, if you've talked it out and you're still not agreeing on whatever the conflict is. Like, as long as you have that communication, then you just have to, like, move past it mm. without that friendship or mm. whatever the circumstances are. And dealing with it in private is such a big thing. People outside this flat wouldn't know what's happening within this flat because mm. if there was conflict, we kind of all gather around the island to talk yeah. about it. We don't bitch about anything. And then leave it. Like, yeah. we leave it at that. We don't then go into, like, separate rooms and be like, oh, what do you mm. think about this? We kind of do it where everyone's together. Yeah. And then it just works. We don't ever get into conflicts with each other. It's always with outside people protecting each other. We yeah. should have yeah. a debate box. 
<laughs> we would win every damn time. No, we really would. Are you friends with guys and does that cause drama between you girls? Not, not, not between, between us. <laughs> no. No, no. no, actually, because I, I wouldn't even know how they would cause drama. I, I guess think, I guess if we had like crushes on the guys and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So. <laughs> it's always falls against like <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> If any of us did have a problem with any of the guys and we vocalised it with the girls, it would be a case of like the girls siding with us and seeing our perspective mm -hmm. over the guys. Yeah. It's never been a case of like us all fancying the same person, having drama in that sense, but if we did have an issue with one of our guy friends as much as like we're all close <laughs> with our guy friends, we're not going to take their side over the girls. As soon as one person yeah. says they like Ooh. someone, I feel like everyone... Yeah, we like go off them, like mm -hmm. straight away. Yeah. If yeah. she was like, I like this guy, instead of being like, oh, I kind of like them, we're like, yeah, okay, go, yeah. yeah. And then we try and match yeah. make, we yeah. don't sit there and pit each other against yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the time that we all thought he was fit for Professor. <laughs> and then I answered the door to Freya and was like, oh my God, have you seen him? She was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I said that. Here's yours. That's kind of what we do is we just shotgun. Yeah. 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 How do I become a girl's girl? Have morals. Yeah. Hold guys accountable the same amount that you hold girls. With male friends, you expect less from them. Mm, but with yeah. female friends, you expect more. So when a guy does something wrong, you're like, oh, it was just like him being stupid. If it's a girl, yeah. yeah. If it's a girl, you're like, I can't believe she would do that. I always feel like people can feel sometimes they don't get along with girls as well as boys because they've maintained boy friendships for longer. And the only reason why I believe that is is because your friendships with guys can be very surface level. It can be really fun, you can get along, but a lot of the time it doesn't go as deep as it does when you're friends with girls. And I feel like because of that, you don't hold them accountable as quickly or as easily as you hold girls because you do expect more from them. Mm -hmm. Which is why sometimes it's easier to maintain because the friendship's more surface level than it it's is with your girlfriends. Yeah. Become a girl's girl, find the right girls, and they will come. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. once you've found the right girls, that's how you remain with the girls there. Yeah. Completely. Through about 50 friendship groups. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, eventually. You'll one. get lucky and they'll Trial and error. Yeah. I think I've said this quote for you guys before, but I saw this thing on TikTok that was like, until uni you'll find your wedding guests but at uni you'll find your bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like, that's so true, it's just you're all going through the same experience together, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. moving away, and that you have to lean on each other, so you yeah. do become closer anyway. And also, because we live with each other, you guys know me so much more in like, like you were saying, like a deeper emotional level. Mm -hmm. Because even if I try and hide it, I can't really hide it. Like if I was just to come into the <laughs> kitchen, like you would know instantly if I was having a bad day and want to talk yeah. to me about yeah. it. Even though I'm so close to my friends at home, it is a different friendship anyway. It's gonna sound cringe, but I feel like it is more family just because- I'm just yeah. gonna say yeah. family. family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think anytime people say, how do I become a girl scale? Because they've probably argued a lot of girls yeah. in their life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, a big thing I stand by is would you rather lose the argument or the person? If you're yeah. in an argument with one of your girlfriends, think, is this argument that deep or like is losing them worse? Mm -hmm. And be gentle because a lot of girls like have this thing in their head where they feel the need to attack with their other girlfriends. Like a built in rival. Yeah, just. But I think that that's because we're so pissed against each other and all sorts. Like, yeah. obviously, we're yeah. all in, in the entertainment industry and we're like kind of always being picked against each other, but just be gentle. I do feel like a reason why a lot of female friendships don't work out is a lot to do with like jealousy and like and seeing then, like, each other's yeah. competition. Yeah, and it's such a shame because. I feel like it's not actually to do with the girls themselves, but more just like, not to make it a bigger thing, but like society in general, like you're used to comparing yourself yeah. to other girls. So why would you not compare yourself to like your beautiful friend or someone who's yeah. more successful than you? I feel like I've learned a lot from that, like yeah. growing up at uni now. I feel like I don't have as much jealousy or worry as concerning my friends. I feel so much more secure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And someone else's beauty yeah. isn't the lesser of your own. Being vulnerable in general mm -hmm. with the girl friendships. And being trustworthy. Yeah. 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 Bruh. Bruh. Yeah, and don't chat shit. It's that easy. It's actually that easy because, like, 
if you chat shit, it's always just gonna come back to you. Especially yeah. if you live in the same flat, that's not gonna yeah. 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 Like people yeah. always find out, one way or another, yeah. whatever mm. you think you're hiding, it's going to come out. Yeah. So just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. You can have opinions, but you don't have to voice them. Yeah. 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 I'm worried when I get to uni that there will be a culture of sex and one night stands, but I'm still a virgin. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I would say like interestingly I had the same sort of like concerns even though I'm in a relationship because I felt like when I got to uni it would be like oh you're supposed to be single like this is the area you're supposed to be single in like be sleeping around and experimenting and stuff like that. I can't really speak on like your guys behalf but for me I feel like there hasn't been such a deep culture of like one night stands and sex because I thought at every party it would be a thing where like you have to get off with someone we like have to sleep with someone. I just had like this chaotic like vision of like euphoria type stuff where everyone's like yeah. doing drugs and having sex and I definitely feel like you are gonna be surprised how many people are in the exact same position as you out there. Yeah. I think it exists but without the pressure that people think comes with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it's still a big thing. Like you probably will go to a party and people will be sleeping with each other, will be doing drugs, but if you wanna do it that's up to you. If you don't yeah, wanna do it that's also up to you. There's, there's no, I don't see the pressure. pressure, I've never felt it. There's no yeah, judgment no, no, no. if that's what you did want to go do. Yeah. And, and if, there's also yeah. no judgment if that's not what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. If people are putting like others on a pedestal for doing that, you don't want to be friends with those people. Yeah. 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 And, and if, if they, they yeah, and if, if they're shaming you for being a virgin for not doing drugs, then they're not friends. And vice versa, if they're shaming you for doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this earlier, and as long as you're not hurting anybody. Do it yeah. yeah. If you want to sleep with people, as long as it's not hurting people, and it's not hurting you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually the worst thing. You don't want to be coming to uni and thinking like, oh, I'm a virgin, so I feel like I should just get it over and done with because that's what people expect from me. Like, don't let someone else take that away from you. If you want to go to uni and lose your virginity straight away, make sure it's your own choice and not the yeah. external pressures. Because at the end of the day, once you have sex, that's for you, and like no one else is going to care after that. Yeah. Do you think girls and guys can be just friends? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I've never. <laughs> it sounds so harsh, but I've never even thought about anything more with any of my guy friends. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. like, so natural. And I don't even think we've experienced a lot of that this year. I mean, maybe we've just got lucky. I know a lot of people do experience like a lot of gossip going around. If you've got like a guy friend, like, oh, they seen each other. But like, I don't think really any of us have had that issue anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, we have just been able to maintain male friends. You did, but now you wife got. Yeah, so <laughs> that turned out a different so, way. not that example. <laughs> I feel like it can 100% work, but it can't if one party has feelings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. then that's where it gets messy. Because yeah. then you get all the unrequited stuff. I understand sometimes you may question it because it's like, oh, it's the opposite gender and we get along so well. There are so many like, pros to our friendship and I get why there might be like a little thing in your head like, oh, could this go further? But it doesn't necessarily mean like it will happen with every single friendship you've ever had. Like, of course, there are always going to be the cases of like friends to lovers, but it doesn't mean that it's actually impossible to have a guy friend because sometimes guys and girls can literally just be friends. And even like in terms of your sexuality as well, with people who are like bisexual, lesbians, whatever, they're friends with people that are like the same like preferred gender mm -hmm. it doesn't mean they fancy every single yeah. person if you become friends with a guy i think it's everyone else first to place that, that yeah. in your head and then yeah. that's when you start thinking oh do i like this person do mm -hmm. i and then nine times out of ten you actually don't it's yeah. everyone just being like oh you laugh together it's so cute mm -hmm. i'm like but i do that with my girlfriends and it doesn't yeah. no one yeah. else is saying that so i think ignoring everyone else's opinion has a big influence on friendships too mm -hmm. and like keeping it private like you would any other friendship it's not like <laughs> really killing it with their yeah. happy relationships yeah <sighs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> How do I know if my talking stage is dead or not? Oh! <laughs> Who asked this question? Who asked this? That's a little bit too specific. Who told? 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 Who
I haven't had that feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah. but if I've in the past spoke to people and they're giving me less maybe like attention or they're being less flirty or less kind, that puts a thing in your head of oh this person isn't as interested so i think then that i think just be honest like because you can either spend personally and i know we all do this we can spend four weeks messaging and being like oh do they don't need do they or if you just ask it takes five seconds <laughs> and then don't just, waste your time yeah. oh, that is a lot easier sound it's, yeah, yeah no i would never do that personally <laughs> Like, hey, where do you see this going? Or how casual do you want this to be? Like, just bring it up, and then if they're even though it's scary, yeah, even though it's scary, but then if it <laughs> turns out, <laughs> I think for the actual dead conversation, I feel like if it's always you reaching for questions and then they're just giving like boring ass answers, or just also like, if it has to be equal in terms of like who's messaging who first. Yeah, like getting to know each other, you can't get to know this person really well and they still know nothing about you because they're not yeah. asking yeah. you. I'm the worst texter in the world. I will take so ages to reply and it'll be a one word reply because I'm just like, oh, I'm so lazy with it. But in person, I'd like yeah. to think of myself as someone who's very much in conversation. So there's two different things. So maybe if it's not working over the phone, as scary as it may be, try FaceTime, say, oh, do you want to go here, do you want to go like on this date, or even if you don't want to label it a date, be like, hey, we should go this place together, that would be fun, and see what it's like, because then in real life, if they're really bouncy and bubbly, it could just be them being a dry texter. Yeah. 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 I don't believe in it all the time, but you know that saying of like, if someone likes you, then you'll know it. And if you're confused, then they don't like it. Like, there should be clear signs. Like, if, yeah. if they're not messaging you, then it's the harsh reality of, like, wait, would well, I want a person that's even unsure and hesitant yeah. anyway? If so they want to, you want they somebody would. that would yeah. choose you and would make yeah. their feelings clear. If they're not doing, then you just waste your time. Um, yeah. And if you get, like, mixed signals now, then imagine when you actually start dating yeah. said person and how many mixed messages and how many ups and downs you'll go through. The queen! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking stage. She's got a lot. Like your language. Like, I think talking stages are dangerous because... <laughs> <laughs> Stay away! <laughs> you build up this idea of somebody in your head that you haven't met. When you meet them, they could be completely different to how you have built it up. And I think that's how it's dangerous leaving it for so long. Because yeah. you meet them. Because even over the phone, they can be different to in person, yeah. but then that can be down to nerves to meet for the first time. That's what I mean, like, give them the, the benefit of yeah. until you meet them. Yeah, yeah. until yeah. you actually fully get to know them. Because it's like, what I do really agree with what Freya said, if they want to, they would, and like, you can tell to a certain extent if somebody does like you or not, just like over text. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, like, it's not fully clear, yeah. so yeah. I don't think you should necessarily, like, give up on them so quick in just a talking stage, because they can be all long and tedious sometimes and if you like them enough you will just push through yeah but then it is it also comes to a point where if it's, like it's not worth anything dead the whole time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. look yeah, for balance rude. if you're someone who wants a relationship and the person you're talking to is making it all flirty and all like all sexual and not emotional don't go for that person yeah. mm -hmm. because they in the long run do not want what you want. Yeah. Unless you want that and then go for yeah. it. Yeah, which is fine. If you want to get some, get some. Yeah. But if you want a relationship and something serious and all sure people you want providing you with yeah. mm -hmm. is certain type of conversation, yeah. don't even bother. And be yes. honest about it straight away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Make it pretty clear straight away. Yeah. Don't waste <laughs> your time. Don't waste yeah. your time. Don't try and change things. what somebody wants. Yeah. yeah if they just want to hook up, they just want to hook yeah. up. You can't you them. You can't up. fix them. <laughs> you can't fix them. Like you. It's so true though, because I feel true. like that's such a massive like I keep talking about tropes, but it's such a massive trope. Like, yeah. I can fix him. Mm -hmm. He wants to hook up. Oh, but then we hook up and then he falls in love with me. It's not gonna happen. No, yeah, it's not. it might, but it's not. Most of the time it does. And if it does happen, so. I don't feel like it would last very long because eventually they would realise they missed out on the, what they originally wanted in the first place. Yeah. Which is why like a lot of girls who get into a relationship with fuckboys and like, we fixed him and then they last like six months and then he goes back to having sex with whoever he wants is because he missed out on that yeah. before dating you so he wants to get that anyway. Yeah. So in conclusion, be wary and keep intentions clear. Period. In conclusion, mm -hmm. be single forever. Yeah, in conclusion, <laughs> the talking <laughs> stages are just... Kind of this is Fred's last question because she has to go to work. But how do you date in your twenties? Uh, 
I feel like when you get to uni, you expect like to find that person. You think you're gonna either meet them on your course or like they're gonna be like flatmates and stuff like that. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure that once that wall pool of people you've gone through that you feel like you don't have anyone that you can possibly be with when I really just don't believe that that's the case. <laughs> I feel like there are so many other ways to meet people, whether that's like online dating, whether it's like in person of just like being out at a club, at a bar, like restaurant, like even on like the tube and stuff. These guys actually witnessed some beautiful <laughs> meet cute thing. Meet you, yeah. yeah, on the tube. The and I feel like you put so much pressure on yourself, like, oh, I need to find that person in school. And if I don't, I need to find them at uni. And if I don't, then I'm screwed. Just anything like workplaces, like walking down the street. There's so many other people you can find in different scenarios so please don't put pressure on yourself to find them at uni and if they're not at uni then you're never going to find anyone i would say keep an open mind because i think each date teaches you something about what you want in life and what sort of person you want just have lightness with it this is what i've been told before it's like just going on a date and putting yourself out there you're not committing to anything and there's no pressure, you're just meeting a new person. And what I found really helpful was to view that as meeting a person that you could end up being friends with. So just having conversations with them like you would friends, like don't put pressure on it to be, this is this could be the start of a relationship. It's like, this is just a first conversation with another human being who is probably just as nervous as you are. So yeah, that's a big just do whatever you want and be careful and have great friends, especially if you're going on blind dates, then have people near you and that know your location because unfortunately being a female especially in london it's mm -hmm. scary especially online dating as long as you're you know having fun and being cautious and not putting too much pressure on yourself I feel like online dating in itself is a very brave thing to do anyway. Not many people actually get to that stage. Like, they'll play hot or not on Tinder, which is fun. But then actually getting to meet someone going on dates, like going to a bar, like, that's brave in itself. Well done, <laughs> The worst that, I know it's the worst that can happen is rejection. But, and then you like, just end up back at square one. But it's, especially if it's a random stranger as well, I've always thought it's not like I've ever done it myself, because I've not, so I can't really say. Life's literally too short. If you found someone attractive, then there's no harm in telling them. If they don't reciprocate it back, then at least they've had a compliment that could literally make their day. That's cute. Um, yeah, yeah. So, that. so don't be afraid because I love telling random people that their outfit's nice. That's not even in a romantic yeah. way. But I know that if somebody said that to me, my day would be made. If your preferred gender is guys, like they don't hear those compliments a lot. Yeah. Like it's, I feel like it's more common for girls to be like, <laughs> oh my god, I love your dress, blah, blah. but for guys they don't hear that a lot. Yeah. So it, it might mean even more to them. My god, I love you. Have a good shift. Do you think it's best to be single or in a relationship in your twenties? And I'm gonna say neither. Yeah. I think it's literally no no whatever answer. point you're at in your life. If you're in a relationship, if you're happy, then so be it. If you're single and you're happy, so be it. If you're single trying to like date and just meet new people, do it. Like, I really don't think there should be a pressure of like, mm -hmm. oh, in your 20s, mm -hmm. you should be single to find yourself. Oh, in your 20s, you should be in a relationship because you need to start looking for commitment. Everyone has what you should and shouldn't do, mm -hmm. but it's about what you want to do. If you're not ready to be in a relationship, yeah. Yeah. don't yeah. be in one. Absolutely. Like, it's that simple. There's not a time just limit of when you meet someone and when you marry and if you have children, if you want any of that, like there shouldn't be in your 20s that's what your goal should be the same way your goal shouldn't be like needing to be single to explore for me i would always see these tiktoks of like oh you should be single in your 20s to find yourself and in my head i was like should i be but it's like no i'm actually happy and perfectly fine right now and as long as you still have that individuality and independence whilst being in a relationship then there's no reason why you shouldn't be one in your 20s i feel like jen i'm covered it yeah. pretty well there are so many people i know that are like older now that said they've wasted so much of their 20s just in a comfortable relationship. Just like be in a relationship because it makes you happy, because you love that person, because they enrich your life. Like you shouldn't be needing to like fill a void mm -hmm. yeah. with a relationship just because A, you feel like you have to, or like you're too scared to be single or like vice versa. And the mindset of people having like, oh, I need someone to complete me. You you're already be. putting yourself at 50%. You as a person yeah. needs to be a whole. You need to find someone who compliments you and not completes you. Yeah, yeah I've always yeah. said like a relationship yeah. should be a bonus to you. Should be, yeah. You, yeah. Should, it should be like you shouldn't need to off. like fill that hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They should just be an added love to your yeah. life. I mean, yeah. Joanne said you can do things that people want to like, 
oh, I want to be in my 20s and being single and doing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You can do that in a relationship. Yeah. Me and Jaylan don't ever find ourselves going, mm -hmm. oh, we can't go out partying tonight and having fun because we're in a relationship. Yeah. It's yeah. just finding if you are in a relationship and you feel like you're missing out on all the fun stuff, just find balance. It's, yeah. like, it's really not that hard to have time with your girlfriends and then like your partner, like you're partying and then you're staying at home. Like just find balance. There's I feel time like to do it. with the fifty percent thing, it's also not fair on your partner. If you're only giving fifty percent, that means your partner needs to give an extra fifty percent to complete you. So they're giving hundred and fifty percent, you'll give fifty percent. That's not fair. And I also feel like as soon as you do feel like you are restricting yourself and you're not going to prize and you're not doing this and you're not doing that because of your relationship, that's when you need to question if this relationship's actually worth the your time. Yeah. So obviously it's different for you, Jayla. But for me, I left who I was with before I moved decided that I wouldn't be able to give 100% to that person. So I think really look at your circumstances and think what would be best for both parties, not just for you yeah. and for them. As much as they would have made it work, I knew that I personally couldn't have made it work, so I wouldn't have wanted them to put in the effort that I couldn't give to them, so yeah. massively look at circumstances when moving away and doing long distance, because it was long distance for me. Nice. <laughs> 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 Everyone's just sat, guys. Oh my god, it does look like we're on a set. Oh my god, guys, I'm so yeah, yeah, that was really helpful, doing not that? It's yeah, not. that feels so much better. How do you deal with homesickness when moving away from uni? I would say for me personally is to make sure that you set yourself a goal for when you're next going to be going home because it gives yeah. me something to look forward to. Every time that I would leave home, I'd be like, okay, I'll see you in two weeks. I'll see you in a month. I'll see you on yeah. this date because then it reminds me that it's not or too far away from me mm. that I'm never going to be able to go back and I feel like that's something a lot of people need to remind themselves is that just because you're moving away Bye friend. Love you. Oh, I have one more thing to say to the camera, this is so random. <laughs> just Somebody told me this and it was so your 20s are meant to be, this is so random, this is not even the question, I'm so sorry. Uh, your 20s are meant to be the time in your life where you make mistakes and you fuck up because it's just literally a part of life. Um, and you're not doing them in your 30s and your 40s. Exactly. It's, it's literally, it's a trial run. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of people when they move to uni they kind of just like forget that just because they're at uni it doesn't mean that they can't go back to their home and their home is always going to be there waiting for them. I felt like when I first moved to uni for first year I felt like once I was moving I was done. It felt like I was never going to go home again, I was never going to see my family again and you just need to remind yourself that it's still there, it's just at a distance now and you just need to make plans to make sure that you can get back to it. Know that it will oh, pass yes. because I for ages <laughs> uh, for ages, I struggled so bad because now like, I just cry every day, but it will pass. And I literally told myself it wouldn't. And then I just, I, I would say it's a switch, it wasn't really, but I, like, I got used to it. And then all of a sudden, I felt like I'd set, settled in. And it was after I'd gone home for the first time and then come back and realised, okay, yeah. it's only two hours away. A bit like what Jaylan said, like, it is a distance, but it will pass. And like, I wish I had somebody say to me, like, it will pass. Because, yeah. but none of us knew it was going to because it was our first. I'm doing it, but it will pass. And make where you are homely. I think I never feel yeah. homesick because we as a flat, obviously, if you don't have yeah. flat mates, my experience like, this year is doing it with. Yeah. Because I've always had these guys, we've always done like movie nights, like we sit together mm. every night and watch Love Island, we order like Chinese food in, or we will like cook together. And there is that family dynamic of like, oh, I'll cook, you wash, you get everything ready like you would at home. Mm. So I think making it as homely as possible like even everyone says like bring pictures but also bring like childhood teddies like i've got teddies that i had at home that made me feel comfortable here yeah. and i know some people will be like oh i'm too embarrassed but if it makes you feel a little bit better and it's your it. space as well yeah. so like fuck everyone else who thinks it's embarrassing yeah i don't know about jay now but my experience this year has been so different because we both in first year weren't friends with our flatmates the loneliness was much bigger even though I was still friends with these guys having to always make plans to see them outside of uni it sounds like it should be so easy but we just didn't actually do it a lot I was so homesick first year obviously because it was first year anyway I didn't eat one meal in the kitchen I would just like eat by myself every night and then I would just like go to bed and just like facetime my mom because I missed her and she was like company of an evening but this year, like, even my mom has said to me and noticed that, like, I don't bring her as much because I'm not searching for that company because 
having such close flatmates does have that like home away from home feeling. Homesickness is so normal and so real. And one of my number one tips is just like, don't beat yourself up about it. Because this is the first time everyone pretty much is moving away from home and that's big. Do not beat yourself up if you're feeling homesick because it's so normal. I know us two in first year did quite a lot, just us two together. I don't think we have done that this year, but that's just because like, we knew that these guys already had each other and me and Jaylon were like, do you wanna just do something together? Because like, <laughs> we just were searching for that company so much more. What was I gonna say? It was really, really profound. Oh, that's annoying. I'll say something not profound. <laughs> Also, like everyone's in the same boat, like Lainey yeah. said. So <laughs> use it to make friends. That was yeah. as well. I remember what I was <laughs> going to say. I was going to say, as human beings, we don't take enough credit for how adaptable that we truly are. Yeah. And I feel like once we're in a really tough situation, it literally feels like you can't escape and there's no way to get out of it. As bad as it sounds, you will just start faking it and one day you'll just start doing it properly without even realising. I realised that in first year that I was constantly just like going into the kitchen like, hi, 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 whatever. And then I suddenly realised, I was like, do you know what? There's no point putting in this effort. Yeah. I'm making friends in my class. I'll just go in, make food, come back, and that's my routine. And it's like really sad as it sounds because like when I would tell Summer, Summer would say like that sounds like a really shit situation and it actually became like it wasn't like suddenly like, it was just it was part just of my routine and it was normal like I went into the kitchen, made food, went to my room, rang my mum and just like that I was like doing it for so many days and so many weeks that somehow I was just doing it and I was just okay and yeah. the same way that I also thought it was going to be weird moving into this flat because I was like Oh my god, it's going to be so weird because yeah. we have so much socialising. Am I going to be able to like be fine with doing that all the time? And then I came to here second year and suddenly I was fine and I was doing it and I'm yeah. socialising every day and I'm capable. Like, I just feel like you need to give yourself so much more credit for how adaptable you truly yeah. are. And as much as you may feel homesick, whether you've got fantastic flatmates or flatmates you don't get along with, you will be okay and you will be functioning and you will be doing it. Right, it was profound. <laughs> I feel like I'm very good at being with my own company, which I obviously in first year especially was a very good skill to have, I guess you would call it a skill. But like Jaylan was saying, like at the start, I felt the pressure of making close friends with my flatmates because that is what society tells you is that like you come to uni and find your closest friends as your flatmates, which obviously these guys were like lucky enough to do anyway. But me and Jaylan didn't have that and eventually yeah, I just sort of realised I don't want to waste my time with people that I naturally wouldn't be friends with and that I don't get on with and that I don't gel with or have like fake friends just for the sake yeah. of having friends. Yeah at uni I definitely realised like how much of a waste of time it is to make friends with people that you actually wouldn't value in your life at all. Yeah. Growing up and stuff I would always want to be like liked by everyone and be friends with everyone and when I got to uni I was like I actually don't care like I just want to <laughs> I actually just want to be friends with the people that actually are going to add something to my life and add value and add significance and I'm going to want to enjoy yeah. spending time with and make memories with. And when I realised, like, within, like, the first couple months of being in my first year that I wasn't going to ever hang out with these people ever again after this year, why waste the energy and effort every yeah. single day yeah. just talking about stuff that I don't care about like when I could just be in my room using that time to call my boyfriend who's three hours away or call my mum who's three hours away like you've just got to weigh up the pros and cons of the situation and understand that you are going to have friends in other situations like when you go into uni and you're going to classes rather than just being at the flat like just don't depend on your flat as your like be all and end all how do you make friends at uni? Thing. I have a tip actually and I gave it to someone. So silly but I think it worked. Take a bag of sweets. Yeah, have them in your pocket. Yeah. Like Starburst because then you can be like, hey, do you want one? And then someone's like, oh, like yeah, thanks. And then they're like, oh, I got these from the other day. And then they're like, oh, I hate them. And they're like, oh, why? Or they're like, I love them. I'm like, yeah, me too. From there, you can talk about like music, movies mm. that you like, sports that you're into. I literally think the smallest just jet. Or like at a party, someone came over to me and was like, hey, would you like to try some more drink? And I was like, oh yeah. And now every time I see that girl, we always say hi to each other. The smallest thing ever. That's such a good idea. Yeah. Isn't it? I always think that if you are someone who's shy, you can't, like I can go over and be like, hey, what's your name? Or if you're someone who's quite shy. But doesn't know how to like start yeah. a conversation. Because then they'll remember you as the nice person who gave them the sweet. Even if you aren't that person that would go up to people and like start the conversation, always be open to having someone come over to you. Yeah. Because if you're desperate to start friendships, but you can't do that yourself, and then you're also shutting other people off when they're trying with you, then you're in like a catch 22 because 
you're not helping yourself at that you're point. You're not gonna you find know. it if you're not looking. Yeah, exactly. When I first started uni, it took me so long to like actually be like friendly with people. Like when people would come over to me, that I'd be like, oh hi, blah, blah, I'd be fine. But then it took me long to actually like meet up with people after mm -hmm. uni. I think it took like it was December for us groups. And yeah. your friends probably will change throughout uni. Yeah. 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 Are we listening to the question, ladies? Sorry, guys. Mm. I don't want to drink at uni, but I feel like I should if I go. I don't drink. Yeah. You've taken us away, Gil. This is your question. That's I don't good. drink, but I still just have a good time. You don't I have to drink to have a good time. George just probably looks the most drunk off. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you can still have a good time, yeah. it doesn't matter. Definitely. Don't let like anyone force you to no. drink. No. Yeah. Were you worried about not drinking coming to uni? I didn't like I think I've got such like a strong mindset about it. I'm like, even if people was like telling me mm -hmm. too much, like, you know, but I can understand why people would be. Yeah, scared. And you don't have to justify yourself. G doesn't drink because she simply does not want to. But if it's a religious thing, if it's a personal reason, if it's because there's trauma behind it, if someone comes over to you just like, hey, have a drink, and you're like, no, no, you're like, oh no, but it's really good. She's like, I just said no, I'm really good, thanks, I'm going to go dance now. Yeah. Like, you don't owe it to anyone to explain why you do or don't want to do something. And if you've yeah. never drank before, and then you eventually do want to. I would say go find people you find safe. And a lot of people that ask time. why I don't. When I just say, oh, I just don't, then a lot of people are understanding. Yeah. People are just like, okay. Yeah, yeah. not oh, wanting okay. to is enough of a reason. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to give anyone an explanation. The no for itself you know is the reason. Be enough, yeah. The no is the explanation too. Like, yeah. that's all that means. No to is a full sentence. And I do completely understand the pressures of it because, like, even for me in summer, like, me and summer do drink at parties and stuff. But during first year, me and summer, like, barely drank. Mm. And I think we just weren't comfortable yet, which is mad because yeah, as much yeah. as we were, like, really close to our friendship group, we just, like, weren't ready to get yeah. drunk for some right. reason. Because it feels more vulnerable in front of these, like, new people that you know. Yeah, yeah. and, like, it was such a yeah. thing, though, because the first time I made the decision to drink, like, some people were, oh, like, way too excited. And it's like, why is it such a thing that it's like this incredible like revolutionary yeah. thing? Why is it so exciting? Like, why yeah. do you want to like pour shots down my throat or get me to drink a whole bottle because you just want to see what I'm like drunk? Mm -hmm. It's such a weird concept. Yeah. Be careful around the people that act that way because you cannot trust them to take care of you. Do when not you trust them. Drunk. Yeah, because once you've reached that level, they won't care because you've reached that level. It's funny. They're taking videos and they've moved on. Yeah. yeah. Now they're looking for the next person to entertain. And you can yeah. still do all the things that everyone else is doing, like Georgia does exactly the same throughout the night that we do. She's still mm -hmm. involved in the dancing, the getting ready, the drinking games. And if you're in a friendship group where one person doesn't drink, be nice and customise things to suit them too. Like anytime we do drinking games, we're like, okay, for the people who don't drink, this is what you have to do instead of drink. People who are always like, oh, I don't drink and they never drink at a party. Like everyone's always fine with that, but if you're if you do normally drink and then you're not drinking at one specific party, yeah, that's when people are like, no, just drink like it will be oh, fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I literally had this at our party like last week. Yeah, that's I why had I, that at summers. I, I had that at summers. Time. Someone came over and was like, have a drink. I was like, oh, I really don't want to drink tonight, thank you. And they're like, no. And I was like, no, I really don't want to. Yeah. I think that then that person was like, mm, and I was just like, oh. don't don't be that person. Yeah, don't. Because first of all, if you are that person, weird. you're probably not watching this video. <laughs> Let's be real. Look weird. Like they, you'll look weird. You'll look like a like harassing someone trying yeah. to get them drunk so you can take advantage. That's what you look like. Yeah. And then everyone's gonna be like, why are they so obsessed with getting that girl yeah. drunk? Yeah. Yeah, and it's the same thing. I know this wasn't in the question, but it's the same thing with drugs as well. And especially with this whole culture of like cliques of people who do drugs and cliques of people who drink or not being invited to certain places because you don't do one or the other. If you're being isolated because of what you choose not to do, then they don't value you enough as a person and mm -hmm. they don't value you enough like as an individual. Yeah. For example, oh, let's all like go to this place and go out for drinks so everyone's invited except the sober people. Let's go smoke weed or whatever so you all get invited to somewhere except the sober people. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that is just so embarrassing and so clicky because it's like, what difference does it make if someone else mm -hmm. is there or not? I don't know, I just think it's weird. That is weird. You look a bit weird. Too. At least give them the opportunity to say no. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, just be like, oh, do you want to come here? Yeah, yeah exactly. don't just assume they don't want to come. Yeah. If I went somewhere that was like a drinking place, I wouldn't be like, oh, gee, won't want to come because <laughs> we're we all drinking. So we just didn't <laughs> well, if we went like clubbing, we just didn't yeah. invite you. It's like, oh, there's alcohol there, so we're just not going to invite yeah. you. Like, what? Yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird. Okay, yeah, final yeah. question. Yeah. Which is kind of deep actually to end on but she are you scared about the future yeah terrifying yeah. <laughs> who isn't are you on this yeah i am 
Shitting a brick. To this, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> to this, I would say. <laughs> Think about how scared you were to be where you are right now and how less scared you are in this moment. Do you like that? That is Lucy. <laughs> this is what we like to call profound. <laughs> That's the only way I think about it. So no matter how scared I am to grow up, think about like when we were like 14 or like 15, 16, even like two years ago when we thought about ourselves at uni right now. And think about the fact that we're in this position filming a girl talk video with people we didn't even know two years ago mm -hmm. and how okay we are. Like it's one of those things again like what I was saying as well about the fact that like you'll just keep going through the days and one day you'll just be okay without even realizing it and you'll know that you've like made it. That's the way that I view my future because as much as yeah of course I'm scared there's no way in hell I'm thinking oh my god everything's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. I do know that my anxieties will be eased and I will be in a different chapter of my life but I'm gonna love it just as much as I've loved this different chapter. Also mm -hmm. just embrace being scared yeah. mm -hmm. as hard as it is. Everyone is like, Everyone, Everyone is in the same position. Yeah. Turn nerves into excitement. Yeah. Like wow. don't feel like we're on like don't a don't be yourself up for being but scared. It's normal. Yeah. To not know what you want to do or like not yeah. know what's gonna happen in the future. I so like I think that's why we are all scared, especially with the careers that we've chosen. <laughs> is because yeah. like that's just like an added bonus. It's just the fact that the future is so uncertain we don't really know where we're gonna be yeah, in the next few years. Yeah. That's what's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Add to that. You said about not knowing what you want to do. Like, I went to uni in my first year and wanted to do an interior design, and then I left. I you not, did you yeah. not know this? I went to uni. I went to uni. And then I, I changed like, to dance. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, and then I changed to dance. So, like, I don't think I, 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 I just yeah. didn't think you'd like moved into uni. Yeah, like, I, I thought it was like, a college course. No, I didn't know it was uni. What's your I know I moved into. Did you do dance at college? Yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, um, I did. Oh, I watched you. Ah! Is that you? No. no. Oh, if it's scary, good, because all the best things are, I think. Yes. Yeah. And I think we're just throwing around Pinterest quotes here, aren't we? Yeah, this is one fact um, paragraph. All good things come to those who wait. So it's going to take a while <laughs> to get to where you want to get. This is a shambles. It's going to take a while to get to where you want to get. So what like Jaylon said, imagine what your younger self would look like. Guys! Stop! Oh, she keeps touching me! Oh. I once. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Carry on. So your younger self now would look at you and be like, oh, okay. So yeah, it took a while to get here, but like I'm here now. So as scary as it is now, just think, like someone said, turn the nerves into excitement because you should be excited. Don't think about the future. If it scares you, block it out. <laughs> Ignore it. Honestly, <laughs> just wing it. Your advice is so Live funny. each day for the day. I, I was going to quote The Office, my favourite quote from The Office. How do you know you're in the good old. This <laughs> <laughs> wrote this one to win. I like this quote. <laughs> no, it just makes me laugh because it's throughout the entirety of our last flat pie. So I'm gonna quote this three times, and every time. Two times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> clips inserted into you. That's what she Ooh. said. Oh. Um, how do you know you're in the good old days before you've already left them? Don't put too much pressure on what's gonna happen in the future. Just enjoy where you are right now because your future self will be talking about you, like the memories that you're making right now. Mm -hmm. Like we'll probably look back on this video that's come out and be like, oh my God, like we're such babies. I was explaining the quotes so I can yeah. see what got confused. Okay. We're gonna be thinking, oh my God, that was so fun when we recorded that video with our best friend. And that's going to be us in the future. Say yeah, hi, future me. <laughs> I agree. That's icky, bro. That's what if my quote isn't that special? <laughs> <laughs> it's been hyped up now. I just think I found on TikTok a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> just 
just about being in your 20s. That's a good end, dinner. Because this video's been very 20s orientated. Yeah. Be careful not to get too wrapped up in life. Bills, stress, dead end jobs, and entertaining men who can and will ruin your life if you let them. If you let these things consume you, like most people do, one day it will be your 27th birthday and you will have no idea where the majority of your 20s went and will have nothing to show for it as you've been approaching the next decade of your life. You have your whole life to stress and worry, but not everyone has the advantage of being in their 20s and using it wisely. Use your 20s to design and create your life and then plan it out. If you want to do something or try something, this is your time to do it. Begin your transformation. The only thing that makes me nervous for the future is meals, your prices going up. No, I understand that. Because <laughs> they're bad now, so that's the most nervous. Oh my god, I would have been done. Me and Jane went to Tesco oh, the other really? day, £3.50 forgot cup up. Which isn't that bad. No, no, right, I think I've got a heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so wow. much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, then we'll be doing more of these in third year. And like, comment and one. subscribe to this channel. Yeah, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you like so much for watching. Subscribe. Bye! Bye. It's Jane on the Asia Rexes. <laughs> <laughs>